This man right here should be so happy. Why are you happy? Look at that. Oh yeah, no, I'm happy. What does uh, that mean? That what does means, that mean in terms of your fishing? That means that it's gonna be, it fits my style. Which is power fishing. Yeah. We've transitioned from None of this summer. Finesse crap. Yes, where you got a dead stick always to get, you know, to get a yeah. bite. So this river has come up a lot. I mean, I, I say a lot, but I mean, people don't understand what. Look there. <laughs> people That's our audience. People don't, out there. Come on. I'm man. sorry. I'm focused. <laughs> um, people don't understand what two and a half feet is on this river when this river is a mile wide two and a half feet the whole way across. If you look at even is. the ramp, look at all the grass yeah. on the ramp. Oh, okay, so that's an example of what we're gonna see. So Those fish get up in that it's stuff, so except juicy. it's gonna be all that stuff out there. Yeah. So, I'm thinking instead of, you know, dead sticking a, a finesse jig or, I'm st I still have the scented jerk shad because Upstream from here is the Juniata, and this time of year it sheds like a dog. All of the, all of that stringy eel grass that comes out. Yeah. Mm, I'm not gonna be throwing the crankbait so much, but spinner baits I've been playing around. I gave you one of those. I, I have it. Those twin spins. I have it. You're gonna but be jackhammering. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. so my what's tied on right now is I have, I have a jackhammer that has it's a special color to this river, and I have. Cool. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's got gold. gold. Yeah, it's got it's gold. A lot of gold in the bait fish. Uh, it's got some pink in it too. We'll get into it, but it's transitioning. I needed the sweatshirt here today, this morning when I was loading up the kayaks. And uh, I didn't realize that I needed a sweatshirt today, this morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's September. It's things are. So. The other thing it does is it compresses fish into to tighter eddies. Right. You know, we're Very they're going to be in more predictable places. Yeah. Let's get out there. Let's catch some fish. Let's get it. Very graceful, Jake. <laughs> so I would imagine this creek is coming up still. Maybe even faster than the river. Um, yep. Whenever I leave it up to Jake, we're always fishing in the city. <clears throat> Trains, bridges, morning rush hour. He likes fishing in the city. It's good fish here. I'd rather not hear humanity. There's traffic accident over there with ambulances. Uh, I've heard the helicopter. I hope it's not our friends that are dumping poison in the river. Hopefully this flushes out some of that and we give our uh, Helgramites a chance to, uh, I don't know, not die. City fishing. Here we come, Harrisburg. So I was fishing the uh, the twin spin, and I'm looking at the turbidity of this water. How muddy it is and I just think man as uh, as muddy as it is I need to switch to something like that I'm gonna switch over to the jackhammer get that vibration going give them a little bit more of a talk to their lateral line um, I don't know if I want to go with half ounce I want to keep it somewhere near the surface let's go with the 3 8 I'll put a diesel minnow on there, give it a little bit of tail thump, take off. You know, the, the twin spin does great going into and coming out of brushy areas, um, but I think I want maximum thumpage. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna take the twin spin off. Go with less visual and more, more lateral line talk because of the muddier water. I may even go with a rattle trap later. But we're gonna step it up with this. So when I was hanging back here, I was seeing some bait fish 
being chased in this area. There's there's still some kind of submerged object up there. And I don't know that it would have caught my attention, but I saw a minnow just jumping out, just trying to get away from something right in here. straight out oh oh yeah that's a, an adult he was in this eddy here let's keep him buttoned he's on the jackhammer the gold shiner one with that hallucinous oh yeah you're a good fish Good start for the day on that. Yeah, it came right out. Good looking fish. I'm gonna get him on my my measuring board for the uh, the blotchy bass bonanza. I've already won two hundred dollars in in Bass Pro Shops gift certificates just participating in this. You know, I'd, I'd call it a tournament. I think they're just gathering data. They just need pictures of bass on a board, whether they have the blotches or not. I'm gonna let him breathe for a second. But yeah, I'm up to uh, 200, 200 bucks, two $100 gift certificates thus far in the blotchy bass bonanza that I participated in. Uh, I actually got one on the board last uh, last month that had blotches on it. So they were really happy with that. So jump in on it, help help the biologists gather the data they need. It's, I actually heard about through the, what was it, American Black Bass something fisheries, something or other, I forget. I, I'll post it at the bottom what it is. It's a Facebook group you should follow because it's it's got some really interesting stuff. But uh, what I'm doing right now is I log on to my catch and I, I better start a trip and I'm gonna do add catch and it's a smallmouth add measurement photo how big is he it doesn't matter like I, yeah I think that there is that you can win for smallmouth and largemouth and whatever but it's it's more about giving them quick get a picture Ooh. it's more about giving them the um, the data they need yeah I gotta retake that wet fingers are uh, all right retake. Yep, this is tournament fishing. <laughs> nice. 17 and 3 quarters. He went in and I still got him. It, yeah, that's... I need a new photo. Tell me this isn't every... Every tournament you've ever been in, you get one that flops in the water. How often do you get them back? He just laid right there for me. He's like, all right, I know. You didn't get a good picture. Thanks for being so patient with me, Fishy. Okay, I got you that time. It's always good to go to where... A nice fish like that hit and I'm I'm on it right here you can see um, it's flooded way back up into there he actually hit right out here on this little patch of submerged grass I cast it up into that dragged it out here once it cleared that I could feel it go and like break free of the grass and he smashed it right about there um, does that mean he was in this eddy 
I don't know, but I'm going to keep throwing it up deep into that stuff and then just ripping it out. We split up, so I'm getting a report. You there, bud? So I got a 17 and a half on, uh, on this side. On, yeah, I'm just throwing the jackhammer up into the grass. Uh, I saw where you were at the head of that island. You doing any good? Typical either, like they're typically not there. So you're you're catching them deep in the grass. Deep in the grass. Okay. And you got you got four of them so far. Yeah, three very small ones and one like maybe fifteen. Okay. Well, I'm gonna keep chucking a jackhammer up in the grass on this this bank, and then I'll uh, I'll head down your way, come find you. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna run these steps up. I'm by the Harvey Taylor Bridge right now. Okay. See you in a bit. All right, bye. All right, bye. Yeah, that's that's typical. We play phone tag out here, sharing pattern information. Um, He's got a couple places in mind that he's going to that he knows at this level um, are are just eat spots. I mean, just ambush type places. I don't know this this side of the river that well, so this is sort of exploring a little bit for me. But I also know just from reading it, there's there's not a lot in the way of. I mean, there are ledges, but. I don't think there's anything major over here. So the, the more dominant um, feature just is the shoreline with this grass. So I'm gonna keep working it. So thus far, we've had eddies that have been fairly narrow and it's only really worth making this cast right there. Uh, but this one's widening out. There's a good bit of calm water that's, that's coming out from shore a little bit so I'm gonna fan cast I'm gonna hit this bank in this flooded grass uh, and I'm gonna launch one kind of 10 12 feet offshore and the next one's gonna be out into this current a little bit you have to sample it uh, when when you get a bigger eddy I mean you're really trying to to fan cast the bigger eddies and cross those current seams if you have them this one's not real well defined but there's there's a good bit of volume here and uh, it warrants more than just banging this uh, this right side with the flooded grass so right middle left and then move up repeat right middle left repeat Time to abandon this this shoreline. See if I catch up with Jake. We got a jet boater coming up on, a, on my right here. Good river pro. Cool boat. You always want to wave to those guys, but also turn perpendicular to the wake. Don't get mad. We got too close. You know what? It's a water sport. If you can't handle getting wet, I don't know. Go buy a pontoon boat and drink beer. Um, but yeah, it's their river too. Oh, look at that current scene. Put it in that grass. Put it along there. Swing my rod tip. Give it another shot. Who's home? Anybody? Yep, as soon as I pulled back to this side, the water isn't quite as brown. I don't know whether it's just that the grass gives it a chance to settle 
settle out a little bit or the rise hasn't muddied up you know it's just the last place for the the mud to reach i'm sitting in mud and current and right there it's still green but i think the reverse happens as the the river falls like the the center will you know will clean up maybe a little bit out ahead of the uh the eddies a little boil right there that man just wouldn't have I it was the last second that I saw that I said I better launch that everything else is smooth in this like otherwise really big eddy and I saw that that one super subtle boil Ooh, thank you for jumping right in the net Yeah, you smell like a Susquehanna smallmouth. You gonna barf up that pink Play-Doh. Yeah. Look at that. I'm gonna take your picture and put you back. That's all I'm gonna do. You stink though. God, you're a stinker. Man, it's bad. When you, you get them in the net, you know right away. You smell that before you even bring them aboard. Yeah, I don't think you were getting off. Alright, we'll get him back in here in just a minute. And then we'll take a look at that really subtle eddy that was that was off the bank. Uh, I didn't see it until I was right on top of it. But fortunately, I got the cast in on time to get this guy. Get you measured and uploaded to the Blotchy Bass Bonanza. Somewhere right out in front of this is where I caught that fish. And I'm focusing on what's on the bank. I'm casting on the bank. Just constantly banging it into as much stuff as I can on that bank. Are you seeing it yet? Are you seeing the little subtle one that's off the bank? What's that? Oh, those trees? The reflection of those trees? Oh, yeah. Gave that spot up. So this is the subtle one. Maybe the obvious place to make cast. And that fish was off the bank on this little, I don't know whether there's a submerged grass bed under there or, or what, but that's where that fish came from. Obvious place to cast, right next to it, subtle place to cast. And just reading the surface, reading those little boils is what gave it to me right at the last minute. And stare at this a minute and, and really that's what you got to do you got to stare at water you always have to have your head on a swivel looking at current features reading the surface how apparent is this i tell you from this angle it's not that apparent i'm gonna steer and then turn and get below it from this angle, it's a little bit more apparent. Why? Because you have the reflection of these these trees kind of showing it off a little bit more. I'm going to cast in there again, see if that guy has some friends. Always stare at water. Always look at the surface away from where you're casting to say, is that where it needs to go next? How about over there? You know, if your eyes are, are always like, okay, you've made a decision, you cast it there, cool. That cast is launched. Look for the next target. Caught up with Jake. How you doing, man? I'm a little frustrated. You're frustrated. Yeah. I'm frustrated when we come and fish <laughs> in the city. Why? And I figured it out. Why? I'll let you go first. Why are you frustrated? I'm frustrated because of switching back and forth with boats and stuff and, and I tightened my motor clamp down way too tight because I didn't 
you know. What the steering right. slipping. So in doing and, that, now I'm on the water and I'm just in not, my boat. Yeah, you know, in your boat, and I'm just not strong enough to get the clamp off because the you'll rubber figure it out. That the, I use. This morning, this morning's trip is a is just a short one. We're out here for a couple hours, yeah. and um, and you got a tournament tomorrow, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go home and rig this thing up and get cool. ready for that. Get an anchor on it. Yeah. Here's why I don't like fishing in the city, and and I think I just figured it out. I figured it out sliding down Jake's wall, and I'm naming it <laughs> Jake's wall. There's a very important part to that wall. That I know, I know there is. Here's here's why I don't like being in the city. Well, for one, I don't like that I'm sliding down that, and I'm trying to film something, and 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 here comes Karen at full blast on her, on her earbuds saying, Oh my God, I can't believe she made you pay for that. She's such a bit. I gotta stop right there because I don't want <laughs> to, to have a profanity check mark, mark on this video. I don't want it. Karen's not worth it. Right. But, but that's, that's awful. Like I don't want an audience. I want this audience. I love this audience. I don't want Karen as an audience. I don't. I, I don't. I don't want to hear her complaining about whatever it is she was comparing. Karen's are. I, I don't need Karen in the video. I had a gentleman walk the entire steps with me one morning. That's what Karen was doing. <laughs> she was pacing me. She was going the direction I was going in. And I'm like, uh, I'm done. I'm catching fish on it. I'm out. I'm done. I also had a jogger with his dog yelling, Duke, no, no, Duke. And I'm like, dude, if Duke wants to come over here and sniff my kayak because it's something novel on your usual morning jog, Duke can sniff the kayak. Yeah. You, you, you but know. No, no. Here's, here's, here's the revelation I had. Here's why I don't care to fish in place, places that the backgrounds, and we're, we're kind of out of it now, have really obvious landmarks in the background. Mm -hmm. I'm a teacher. What's the purpose of my of my my channel? To teach somebody to go find place someplace new and do it. Yeah, versus it's go to the place and, where you're and, at. And being a a teacher, I want them focused on what my message is, what the pattern is, what we're doing that I want to teach. And I believe, I think it's you can you can disagree with me if you want, but I think that when people watch videos with obvious landmarks in the background their brains too busy figuring out where it is right. instead of focusing on the lesson i and i think it just hit me today i'm like that's why i don't like i don't like filming here i don't totally like filming near the, the mouth of the juniata because that bridge or be or by the statue of liberty that bridge but is it's loud isn't it my goodness it, it's not even that i don't like having people focus on on Oh, oh, I'm going to go fish where they are. No, no, no. Just focus on patterns and what I'm teaching you. Well, and I, I think, you know, in certain channels, like my channel, my channel is not a teaching channel. and you It know, is to a certain degree. Well, I don't really consider it that. All right, but, you're entertaining. Um, you know, people watch my channel, and they can obviously see a lot of times I come down here and fish because I live 10 minutes away. Why wouldn't I, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, they can see that, but I'm not... Sending it's, them it's, a message. It, it, incidentally, yeah. this is the closest part to my home too. It just happens to be an hour and a half instead of ten minutes. Right. But for you, like people, need, people need to not focus on where you're at, but what you're doing. They can't. But that's what with your channel. I mean, don't don't focus on what I'm doing because most of the time it's wrong. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Uh, I think I think differ. I think your content. I mean, I think your tournament performance says otherwise and I don't know. The lion squirrel finds another nah, that's, that's not, not true. <laughs> Jake says he's got an adult here. I do have an adult. <laughs> Let's see this big fish man. Oh beautiful. Beautiful fish. What'd she hit, eat? She ate a jackhammer chatterbait. Um I'm not gonna talk about the color, but why not? Cause <laughs> it's a secret. It's my secret. All right. It's my secret. It's similar to your color, though. Okay. 
it's got some gold in it. It does. Yeah, right. gold, gold and, and a little bit of light pink. Light pink on this river pink. tends yeah, it tends to work really well. Pinky. I'll show it to you, but I can't tell you what the color is because then you guys might want to order it. Yeah. Well, for one, you got you got a beer run colored diesel minnow. And now you're already mad. <laughs> you know how hard it is to find beer run in a in a predominantly freshwater area with a saltwater bait color. You just order them from Z-Man, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice eat. fish, man. Thanks, Where, buddy. Talk to me about location. Where was this fish? So she was tucked up in some wood on the bank, um, and she actually followed it out. Yep. And came off the bank because I watched her wake at it. She she followed it out. And, oh, it's beautiful. And smashed it. All right. So flooded wood. Yes, sir. I like it. Nice eighteen and a half and. That one's chewing and flooded, uh, flooded wood with this rising river. Nice catch, man. Thanks, buddy. There she goes. She swam off nice and easy. Most yeah. of the time they splash you and yeah, all kind of nonsense. Well, if you if you feel a little left out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. We listen. This water is probably not good to have on our skin. Gray water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Someone's coliform from Halifax is now on your skin. Oh. oh that's a good one. Just... Oh. I know you're calling me Jay, but I can't. Following uh, Jake's lead, just pounding the wood on the bank. Good for another one. Uh, I've stuck with the jackhammer. I've stuck with this, you know, gold shiner jackhammer with the uh, gold rush uh, diesel minnow on there. That dark counter shading. I think it's critical to get, really get it close to. Uh, close to structure in the grass in the um, you know bang in the wood just keep it close because you have a little bit clearer water there and uh, it comes over the top and they they want it get you on the board yep another nice 16 incher you gonna stay there long enough to me to take your picture I will tell you, they're not real um, hard on you in terms of, they don't care how you measure the fish. They just need a, uh, let me do a release photo, or release video. They just want to know that you're, um, you know, they're just taking uh, pictures. They just want to um, get the photos and study the fish, I guess and uh, see if they have blotches on them. All right, this is sort of interesting. I don't know if it's gonna convey on film, but you got a grass island here. You got fairly fast moving water on, it, on the other side of the eddy. But do you see that delineation between, that's the muddy water out there, but this water right here is greener, so that's indicative of a river that's still coming up. I mean, this is, this water probably has, I'm gonna tell you a foot and a half, maybe two foot of visibility out there. I think it's less than a foot. So this, this river still, still rising. Look at that mudline. Mudlines are, you know, are good, uh, <clears throat> good targets to, uh, you know, transitionary targets to, uh, to, you know, pay attention to. So, we'll see it here. You can see that clarity of the, the jackhammer there. But then, when I fling it over there, I, don't, I gotta really be in it, but it's, it's muddy out there. 
That's why that vibration is so critical. This island, this grassy area, right here, oh, just kind of whipping it around. Get in there. Beautiful fish. He's right there. It's funny as the the day warms up, it's like the bite is actually picking up. So we're back in this eddy, it's a, it's a large eddy, um, water's blocked off from the main river and there's, there's a little bit of a stain difference in here. It's a lot more clear. Um, I've already missed one fish right off of this log jam right here, um, but I know that there's more in here just because it, it's completely, completely still and somewhat cleaner than the main, the main stem or, or where the current's flowing out in the main stem. So just kind of throwing around whatever it looks like where it might be fishy. Hopefully we're gonna get one. All right, it was a nice morning run with Jake. I think he's already back at the ramp. We're getting a lot more of this stringy stuff that comes down. I think a lot of it comes out of the Juniata, but yeah, it's good vegetation, great habitat but it's something that we battle every fall here on the Susquehanna. And you know, you get a couple of those, these flush outs, and, and this wasn't a big one. I, I think this got into the low, low five foot gauge uh, reading. You know, it's, it's a start, but every year, you know, I think I said it at the beginning, it's like a dog shedding. As you go into, um, you know, into winter, all that grass comes loose and uh, you know, you got to fight it, but that is, it's a good thing because the places that the minnows can hide just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and that's really where they get their feet on. That's really where they, they start chewing a lot and um, makes for a really good fall bite. It's just starting. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, one more look at this water clarity difference. Look how clear that is. I just came through some of that, but that's my mud from the motor. But nice clear water down from this eddy. Then you come out into the current. Big old cream of mud and grass. Everything. Poor visibility, lots of grass coming down. It's an uh, early fall transition from rain. It's a beautiful thing. Are you catching fish up in this creek? I am. <laughs> I, I, I got four already, and one's 18 and three quarter. Nice. And one was about 17. Very cool. I already wrapped up the episode, and here you are, catching, <laughs> catching creek bass. I don't know why I ever leave Rich Piers, Jeff. That's where I'm home. I know. But they, this, this one and this one is where they've all come from. Nice. So I want to get turned around and see if there's a 20 sitting in there. All right, get him. Oh yeah, that's a good fish, buddy. That's a good one. Get in there! <laughs> nice, man. Oh, I love when they're eating the chatterbait like that. Getting in on the action, too. In the creek. This one feels good. Got 
a good one. He was in that, on that side. I haven't touched your spot on the left. They're, they're literally stacked right there. Yeah. That's gotta be what, 18, 18 and a half? Yeah, sure. That's a free 18 <laughs> Hold them up. Another nice one. Good job, buddy. Thanks, dude. So, that was a fun little flurry of activity at the end. It's almost like the river was like, wait, it's noon. What are you guys doing? Like, you can't leave yet. I think this might be the earliest we've ever gotten off the water together. Yeah, but we decided we were going to do that. And now it's, we said, what? We're going to set a limit at noon. We both had different reasons for that. No, it exactly went like this. Jake, it's 1147. You want to head back to the ramp? I said, sure. And it's what, tw almost one? Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's an hour later. Yeah. But it was worth it. Like, oh yeah. The flurry of activity right there. I don't know. Like I had, I had one nineteen, uh, two eighteens, a seventeen, and a fifteen. That's awesome. All within ten yeah. minutes. So that's what happens in the fall. You find a group of them, and there, there's going to be more of that size together. Yeah. And. Uh, I think it was a lot of onesie twosie until then, but then there was definitely a group of fish yeah. right there. So, see ya.